thank you agam uh, welcome back and thanks a lot for giving time to record this video uh, last time we discussed about last mile delivery how the food ecosystem works in terms of deliveries customer uh, experience uh, what goes behind uh, that part of the world uh, how teams work what needs to be done to make sure customers are happy so today our plan is to get a deep dive more into that part especially from the kpis or um, uh, metrics point of view that what goes behind in designing everything especially from food uh, uh, delivery supply chain so when we have to start this if you can briefly share that which are the key uh, driving metrics which are used to evaluate the uh, food delivery part uh, the supply chain and the related areas and then we can deep dive mm -hmm. into those metrics yeah so Manindar, uh, thank you for having me uh, on your channel again. And it's always a pleasure to answer your uh, pretty smart questions. And uh, I think you got a good feedback from the past. I also got a good feedback from the past and happy to be back again mm -hmm. and happy to be sharing my knowledge uh, with you and with your audience in this particular podcast. So uh, look, if you want to talk about the metrics for food delivery, I think based on my experience, uh, probably we can discuss the top five metrics on which uh, I worked in the past and I manage hundreds and thousands of deliveries on a daily basis, not on a monthly basis. So definitely, uh, I think for a food tech company, uh, these are the top five metrics, either from overall p point of view or from customer experience point of view, from restaurant point of view or from wider point of view. So the topmost metric which comes in place is the cost per order. Uh, people call it CPO. Next metric is, uh, uh, and basically let me explain those one by one. So what is uh, CPO? So what is the cost uh, which you incur to deliver a food order to the customer? Now in this cost, there could be many elements. The money which you have to pay to the rider the money uh, which uh, rider would be incurring probably in the fuel cost, probably renting on the bike or owning the bike, that is the cost for the rider. Now there is a cost for dispatching. So you would have thousands of dispatchers sitting in the back end and you would have a call center as well, managing those riders, their on-demand availability, whether they are available or anything of that sort. Next is branding of those couriers. So for example, you have to provide uniform to the couriers. You need to sometimes provide a branded uh, bike or a box as well. So there is a cost to brand the vehicles. Then the next cost element which could be coming within this is basically your salary, my salary, people who are managing the overall logistics of the company. So majorly these are top four, five elements of, of this particular metric. Now, if you move to the second metric, it would definitely be how many deliveries a rider is able to do in one hour. That is what defines the efficiency of the marketplace. And uh, for any food tech company, uh, they would like a rider to be able to deliver more and more orders in one hour. That's what defines the rider is not lying idle. And uh, in a lot of companies you pay on a monthly basis or an hourly basis, irrespective of whether an order is given to the rider or not, you will have to still incur that hourly cost to the rider. So instead of paying rider for his idle time, you should be paying the rider while he's delivering the food. So number of deliveries being done per hour uh, defines uh, your profitability and better efficiency. At the same time, it makes your riders happy because if they are able to deliver more orders in one hour, that means they are able to earn better as well and they would have better stickiness on your platform. Otherwise, if you are not able to generate enough income for them, they tend to go to other platforms and that might create a supply shortage for you. Uh, so uh, we discussed DPH, we discussed CPO. Now let's move on to a metric from customer point of view. So we call it delivery time. Now, how do we define delivery time? The time uh, customer place an order on the app and mm -hmm. order is confirmed. Until that order is being delivered by the rider to the customer on his or her doorstep. All that time, basically, the time order has been delivered to the customer minus the time stamp uh, the order was placed by the customer. All these elements are together being called as delivery time. Now, there are several components of this delivery time. 
which is order creation time, order dispatching time, the time it takes to find a rider to deliver that order. Now that order, uh, that rider goes to the restaurant, restaurant takes time to prepare the food, it is called as preparation time. Now time from point A to point B, point A is the vendor's location or restaurant's location, point B is the customer's location. The time it takes uh, for the rider to move from vendor to the customer, now there is a customer waiting time, though the rider has reached to customer's premise, but imagine the customer is living in Burj Khalifa. Yeah. So it will take that rider minimum 10 to 15 minutes to reach to the customer. So there is customer time involved as well. And there are different ways of cutting this time short. Mainly the efficiency comes in by reducing the preparation time uh, from the vendor side. So if a restaurant already knows how many orders at what point of time they are expecting, they would have the raw material arranged in time, they would have enough staff arranged in time. Uh, the efficiency comes in by providing accurate location of the restaurant and accurate location of the customer to the rider so that he reaches to the location in the very first instance. He should not be calling the customer or the vendor or the, or the rider care, hey man, where is the location? I'm unable to find it and he would just end up wasting his time. At the same time, uh, if uh, in a marketplace, if you have an extremely high density of customers at the same time restaurants, at the same time riders, that means an order would be dispatched from a restaurant to a rider, which is pretty much close to that restaurant, probably let's say 10 seconds away. That's what reduced the time from the rider to, to basically the time it takes to for him to reach to the vendor. And if uh, basically, if the customer is also close to the restaurant, basically, order should be dispatched accordingly. So there are different ways of reducing the overall delivery time, but overall delivery time is just an output of many input metrics, which is preparation time, time at restaurant for the rider, time from A to B point, time at customer by the rider. So you need to keep on optimizing all these inputs of delivery time to have uh, an overall holistic improved overall delivery time. Now, uh, we discussed about the overall platform, CPO, again, overall platform, DPH. We discussed from customer point of view, the delivery time. Now let's discuss a couple of metrics from uh, effectiveness of the platform or from the rider side or from the merchant side. The next metric I would like to cover is preparation time. Uh, preparation time of the restaurants or a dark store or a dark kitchen, what it is. So the amount of time it takes uh, for a restaurant or let's say for a grocery store to get the food or grocery ready for it to be handed over to the rider. Now, generally in the market uh, of UAE, average preparation time of restaurants is 10 to 12 minutes for food. And for groceries, the average preparation time is uh, for dark stores specifically, it is on an average two to three minutes. So that means basically uh, if you are delivering a food order, you can dispatch an order to a rider who will be able to reach the restaurant within 10 to 12 minutes so that it becomes JPT, it becomes just in time. As soon as the food is prepared, the rider picks up the food and he ends up delivering it to the end user. So uh, imagine a scenario, the preparation time is 12 minutes. The rider reached to the restaurant in 12 minutes. However, the restaurant is unable to prepare the food in 12 minutes. Yeah. And restaurant prepares the food in 20 minutes. So the rider would be standing in the premise of the restaurant. He would be spending his eight minutes, which would be idle. You would have to pay to the rider. So your CPO would increase. At the same time, you would have promised a delivery time to the customer. So your order would be laid by minimum eight minutes. So the customer is dissatisfied. Rider is going to earn less platform is going to spend more and basically at the end of the day the customer might provide a bad rating to the restaurant as well because you could not prepare your food on time so it's a very important metric and a lot of platforms all across the world i think not every platform is able to calculate this time because this time varies by the cuisine by the number of items you are placing in an order if you just order a uh, can of coke your preparation time is hardly any few seconds. But imagine you order 10 pizzas. Yes. So your preparation time probably is going to be 15, 30 minutes. So I've seen orders th uh, worth thousands of dirham, and it takes probably an hour to prepare those orders. And even a single bike ride, I cannot deliver those, those orders. So even there are orders which takes more than an hour to prepare and to be delivered. But then there is a special treatment. There's a special dispatching or manual dispatching which has to happen for those orders. And especially during special days, like let's say it's, it's, it's New Year, it's Christmas, it's Diwali, it's Ramadan, when the orders are peaking, 
those restaurants need to really arrange uh, enough staff uh, and uh, enough staff needs to be arranged during the peaks of the day, during lunch time, during evening time. And they need to ensure all the raw materials are available with them to keep their preparation time in check. Because if preparation time goes up, it impacts the overall, all the uh, all the stakeholders of the ecosystem. So it's, it's a pretty uh, uh, important metric to ensure everything falls in place. Now let's let's talk about a metric from rider point of view, uh, which impacts the overall ecosystem again. So percentage of orders, basically we call it rider delay. Uh, percentage of orders which got delayed by more than X minutes, and that delay was contributed by a rider. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now there could be many ways. So sometimes not not all the riders are disciplined, and sometimes there are some unwanted issues uh, which happens with the rider. For example. The rider is on the way to the restaurant or rider is on the way to the customer, but his bike breaks down yes. or the fuel gets or, or 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 a mishap happens with the rider. So the rider is unable to reach to the vendor and to the customer on time and whatever delay it's create, it is being recorded as rider delay. And for the overall platform, you can find out what percentage of orders are being delayed in your city, in your area, in your country, because there was a delay by the rider. Now that uh, vanity metric, it tells you, you should be calculating it area by area uh, or zone by zone and rider by rider. For example, if there is one rider wherein percentage of rider delay, let's say is more than 20%, that means the rider's behavior is a problem. Mm -hmm. However, if there are 10, 10 riders and everyone has, let's say two, three, 5% of the delays on an average, that means there could be something which is every, averaging it out. But if uh, there are, let, let's say, 10 top 10 percentile of the riders and their rider delay is extremely high, that means the problem is with the rider. So you need to pose those riders. Either they don't know how to use GPS, either they are not very much accustomed about the areas, mm -hmm. they might not know how to, how to park their vehicle, and they might be struggling with something. They might not know how to use the app of the aggregator as well. Mm -hmm. So there has to be coaching, training, and retaining mechanisms, which needs to be deployed to ensure the percentage rider delay, it, it, it keeps in check and it doesn't impact the overall performance of the platform. So Marinder, I can talk about 50 more metrics, but I think for, for a platform, these are the top five metrics, which they should always keep in check to yeah. ensure efficiency and effectiveness of the overall platform and uh, to ensure all the stakeholders in the ecosystem, the rider, the merchants and the customers and the platform itself, uh, basically, that is taken care of, and everyone is having a good time. Correct. No, no, thanks. Uh, I was noting down, down all the points. So actually, in in your first um, uh, input itself, you have covered majority of the things which I had in my mind, which I was planning yeah. to ask you. <laughs> so I will skip Perfect. those things because you have already touched the critical aspects of uh, this food delivery ecosystem, covering the riders, the customers, the platform, like what you mentioned, uh, and don't the... tell me, Maninder, don't tell me you are a finance expert and you will be grilling me more on the cost side of the metric. <laughs> no, 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 no. I will keep it uh, neutral to all the parties, <laughs> the whole ecosystem. So let's go ahead. Uh, yes, yes. So actually, let's let's touch the. According to me, one of the key areas which could be a pain point also which i think you will be better to uh help me understand uh the inventory part so like mm -hmm. delivery we are dealing perishable goods very less shelf life and uh, the hygiene part people are like the most topmost priority that we are whatever we are getting is good and uh, yeah. we can eat it properly but like we cannot keep very high inventory also considering all these factors so how companies take care of this part and how these are covered in different uh, metrics uh, in the delivery supply chain yeah very good question maninder and uh, frankly i think a lot of restaurants or or a lot of uh, kitchens still don't use the modern day technology which is available in the market so i would like to correlate this for a restaurant as compared to a warehouse let's say and mm -hmm. let's call it as an e-commerce warehouse mm -hmm. so an e-commerce company they always know what are the fast moving goods what are the slow moving goods and uh, basically on what particular day uh, what is the time to order what is the time to receive such products right 
Uh, but restaurants, uh, I think still I would say 70-80% of them. I don't have this verified number with me. I'm just guessing. I think that high percentage of restaurants, they still don't use any technology which is able to be able to forecast for them. Hey, man, you need these many kgs of chicken. Okay. You, you need these many kgs of potted cheese. Uh, you probably would would have a uh, 100 liter of water bottle order coming in next one week. And then this is the time uh, it would take you to procure. This is the time it would take you to receive all of these things. So I've seen, I know some companies who have come in town, especially in UAE, and they have started managing the supply chain of restaurants before basically they start receiving orders coming from aggregators. So what those companies are doing is basically they, they pull data from those restaurants. For example, you uh, you have consumed, let's say, 100 kg of tomatoes, 500 kgs of onion, 200 kgs of flour, uh, and blah, blah, blah. And based on that, basically, they see how the consumption is in last three, four months. And basically, when they get this input details, they start predicting to those restaurants, hey, man, in next one week, you, you should have this much of potato with you in next upcoming three weeks. You should be having this quantity of these many products to be available with you. And that's how restaurants have started basically reducing the waste or reducing uh, the items uh, which uh, uh, ends up uh, with their shelf life. And basically those, those items cannot be used uh, to prepare food which can be delivered to the end user. So I think such technology has started coming in place and based on those uh, highly technical uh, machine learning algorithms, uh, the restaurants are able to predict how much raw material they would need per item for how long and such things have started happening in the market. But I think it would take probably a couple of years more mm -hmm. for a wider of such technological advancements by, by the restaurants and by the cloud kitchens. Okay, okay. So, so while you are saying that um, uh, it will take some time, companies have started doing it. So, is it right to consider that because there is less visibility in terms of data and the pattern which uh, customers are resulting into when they are buying from these platforms, so it is becoming difficult to understand actually what will get consumed in coming one week or two weeks or three weeks. So, somewhere is it one of the reasons that the demand forecasting is a big challenge for this space currently? Look, uh, there are two demand forecasting probably which we would be talking about over here. Aggregator has all these data with them. Aggregator okay. knows how many pizzas have been ordered in the past, how many Coke cans have been ordered, how many biryanis have been ordered, uh, or how many liters of milk has been ordered from what particular area, at what time, by what customer cohort. Mm -hmm. aggregator has this entire data with them mm -hmm. however the end merchant uh, who is using this marketplace who is listing their items on the platform i don't think they have this data available with them because they are just delivering those products to the end users or they are using the aggregators logistics to deliver those products but this data is not accessible by them now uh, the aggregator is able to forecast the demand in terms of how many, like, let's say at 8 a.m. in al Barsha, roughly how many orders I'm expecting. And based on that, they would be able to place that many couriers at that particular area. Okay. And uh, there are machine learning algorithms, which basically keep on processing data for last 12 months. And based on that, that machine is able to predict for next two weeks in what area, at what time, what is the expected demand. And based on that, the machine is able to predict how many couriers you would need at what particular time. Now, if you have a supply shortage and you need to run certain uh, pricing uh, uh, schemes, certain incentivizing schemes or such schemes for the riders. For example, if you are short of 20% of the riders and you need to uh, run some incentive scheme, uh, telling them if you operate during these hours, you are gonna get X percent more or X times more of what you could have got during a normal hour. So demand supply forecasting is available at an aggregated level, but for the restaurants to be able to predict how much raw material they would need in the near future, not every restaurant is still using that technology. And for that adoption of such technology, I think uh, a lot of empowerment, education, 
mm-hmm. and adoption of technology would be would be required by restaurants i'm not saying uh, no one is doing this yes a lot yeah. of restaurants are doing this but not everyone is still doing it okay okay so so even though agam you have explained it uh, can we take one sample case um whatever you like and use the primary matrix which we you explained in the start and for example if one company has to do some kind of data analysis so how they will read the matrix like you can take any random numbers and like a sample case if i have to read any report or something like how it how, how it looks like can i didn't get it can you explain can you explain more so for example if i am a uh, i am a company who uh, just started this business of delivery and i am working with some aggregator on uh, on that platform i'll sh- showcase that these are the products i can deliver and uh, the aggregator is connecting me with the customers and suppose aggregator is providing few data points on certain metrics like what you explained in the start and i'm using mm-hmm. that data point to optimize or increase my efficiency for example so so can we take any sample case like how it looks like this process like my company agree uh, i don't think aggregator provide any of those data points to okay. the restaurants but a restaurant would uh, would have this data available as a dashboard on their own like in last one month how many orders they got for pizza for biryani for milk for or for buttermilk for cold drink and all but uh, the system might not be that smart enough to basically for them to be able to conclude based on these orders Okay. how many car you should order for the next month okay. that data is technically available with them but that date they are unable to process that data and they are unable to basically take some action steps out of that data so what a lot of restaurants do is they pull this data they they insert this data into a system and then that systems can help predict them hey man how much raw material you should be ordering when uh, okay. for you to be able to process these many orders as per your historical orders okay okay got it got it so like most of them have an access to a basic dashboard and then it depends on then how they are using the data further okay. correct correct uh, basically uh, aggregation is just about whatever is available with you i'm going to display it to your customers and it's the choice of the customer and aggregation doesn't provide any other input to the restaurant it is restaurant's duty to ensure whatever product you are displaying on the aggregator's app you have done all of your homework to be able to produce that particular item to be able to deliver to the end user now it's your job whether you use any solution or you have something in house for you to be able to have the raw material available with you to produce those items if you are unable to produce you need to delist those items from the aggregator platform okay okay you might have seen that problem of stocking out right so when you when you order a lot of grocery items uh, sometimes they are not available and basically customer care guy reach out to you hey sir this item is not available can i replace your apple red apple with a green apple right so there is a problem which happens when you are not uh, refreshing your inventory and uh, you are you are not refreshing that data on the aggregator sir So same thing happens uh, as you rightly said sometimes there is a wastage other mm-hmm. times there is like you end up taking extra orders but the raw material is not available with you yes. that is that is worse as compared to your raw material is getting wasted because yes. over there you are losing the revenue at the same time you end up losing that customer as well who placed an order from you and later on you are telling them boss i don't have enough chicken available with me to prepare that chicken tikka which you have ordered from my restaurant so yes. that is that is yes okay okay actually this happens a lot with me not from the food delivery point when i order groceries so yes. dhaniya is one thing which i don't get when i want it mm-hmm. <laughs> so my health is highly highly perishable and highly replenishable right so <laughs> not everyone uh, not everyone would like to stock it and you need to right. have a fresh supply chain every single day of coriander to be coming to to the dark store and uh, probably that dark store or that grocery store is busy managing their orders and they end up forgetting to refresh their inventory on the aggregator yes yes right right okay so i connecting all the dots uh, what we have just covered uh, so if there is a business uh, or there is an there is an organization who have just set up this business and they are already working in this space for some time 
so what kind of challenges they commonly face to optimize the metrics when they are implementing or working on the supply chain of food delivery like we started from here now we want to reach there but this is what is happening and we have to work on this so how how does that look like for a typical so from merchant point of view or from rider point of view or from any other point of view from merchant point of view got it so look uh, i interviewed hundreds of merchants in the past first thing which they face is every aggregator provides them a post machine and that post machine needs to have internet connectivity so in the beginning uh, almost every merchant struggles with the connectivity or understanding of that post machine whether that post machine is sending an alarm or or it's ringing whenever an order is coming so there are certain metrics which get impacted one is there is an acceptance rate of orders by the restaurants as well and a lot of restaurants either they keep their post switched off or it gets switched off and the battery is over or they don't like using multiple tablets multiple post uh, post machines so the restaurant manager is not happy managing five post machines with them so the acceptance rate of of the merchant goes for it all and acceptance rate is the first metric and the most important metric for a restaurant to be able to receive more and more orders and at the same time deliver those orders so if you are not able to accept your orders uh, that order will get uh, undispatched from the system and uh, uh, probably a notification will go to the customer this restaurant could not accept your order so we recommend you to place an order from some other restaurant that is one uh second is a lot of restaurants who get onboarded onto a platform newly they struggle to get more orders they struggle to get even like single digit orders for the very first first few weeks until and unless they they are a known brand and they are known by uh, everyone so i would recommend those restaurants those merchants to be to be doing some branding on the platforms uh, on the aggregators platform in the beginning uh let that aggregator announce on the social media now you are available on that platform uh do some banner uh, buy some post per clicks or something so that your ranking is on top while a customer uh, opens the aggregator app uh so that way you would be able to get sufficient orders coming your way and lastly the preparation time definitely so preparation time is something which you should be keeping in check from day one as soon as the rider arrives the food should be ready and you should be able to hand over that food to the rider uh, for you to ensure your orders are being delivered to the customers because customer has a way uh, to basically when the delivery is done a customer can rate the restaurant yes flat and the rider separately so your rating uh, you would be rated based on the quality of the food based on the timeliness delivery or preparation of the food by you and based on the packaging of the food so you should be doing good on all these three aspects for a customer to provide you a five star rating mm, okay and if if we have to pick the most difficult one out of these to optimize which one preparation would be preparation time preparation time of course because that's highly dynamic that's highly yeah. dynamic as i told you a customer can place one biryani order or probably 10 biryani orders and you don't know when the order is going to come yeah. uh, you might not have the raw material you might not have the staff your you might not have a, an oven which can cook uh, or utensils which can cook 10 biryani in one go for you so yeah. preparation time keeps you always on your toes and if your preparation time is in check uh, your customers will be happy most of the time and the rider most probably would be happy because uh if your preparation time is higher riders get to realize it after some time and riders talk with each other as well they say boss this restaurant never prepares on time so if you get an order from this restaurant don't accept that order because you're going to waste your time oh. so bet you accept an order from some other restaurant for food on time so that you are able to deliver more orders so if a restaurant lets you wait in their premise riders don't want to accept orders of those restaurants and that's and that becomes a cascading effect that's what delays the order for the oh okay okay this part i didn't know actually this is something new for me <laughs> same don't... thing for much same thing for much and same thing for riders if uh, riders won't accept certain orders like far distance orders or the distance from or the orders from certain merchants sometimes let's say a rider is working in one area for let's say 4 years they even know who is the customer who has placed this order and if they don't like the behavior of the customer they are not going to ex- even accept the order from the customer mm-hmm. uh same thing goes with the uh, merchant so before accepting the order they would see how many items are being ordered uh, in an order 
or they would know whether they have the raw material available for those products or sometimes let's say they are they are about to close their shop at 8 p.m and the order came at 7 50 p.m so they might not accept those orders so uh uh there are several aspects to it man and uh, as we call it as on-demand delivery it's, it's pretty much demanding and things keep on changing in, in fraction of seconds every now and then yes yes no no thanks a lot for explaining that so I'll 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 move to the last part of our discussion for today. Um, so related to this last point only. So um, as per your experience, generally on an on an average, uh, even though it's subjective, but okay, so we take any sample case as per your experience. On an average, how long it takes for a, a merchant to establish the supply chain, uh, which is like good enough to cater all the uh, metrics very well and uh, achieve the customer success. So is it in months or it takes years? Like how does that look like? Definitely not years. So I think in the worst case, it could take someone six months, but in the best case, it, took, it, it, it could take someone three months. So let's say the range becomes three to six months. Within three to six months, a merchant can really become an expert uh on in optimizing their acceptance rate and optimizing their uh the count of orders which is uh, which is coming to them how to optimize their preparation time how to manage their reputation behavior well with the riders how to get better ratings uh, by 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 customers for the orders which has been prepared by them uh it is also a function of the number of orders which which are being uh, delivered or by being being received by them Imagine I, I talked about three to six months, but a restaurant hardly receives 10 orders in those six months. What are they going to learn? Yes, so uh, I think another factor over here would be, let's say someone gets minimum 10 orders per day. And if they're getting that many orders, I think three to six months would be a good enough time for them to be able to learn, uh, to be able to come out with all the mistakes, all the things which they need to learn from. And they can really become an expert the six months of operations on a platform it doesn't take years for sure it would take years if you're not getting orders but you need to solve that particular problem as well why are you not getting orders are you investing enough in your marketing or if there is a feedback your product is not being liked by customers or your behavior toward right riders is not great or your ranking on the platforms app is is, is at the bottom the rest uh, the customers are unable to see you your presence is not being felt by the customers on the app so there are many factors to that and within first three to six months, you can realize all these things and you can start working on all these aspects of your business. So uh, if I, if we take that, if there is only one store from which you are preparing everything and uh, supplying, so if you are able to deliver 10, 15 orders per day, I think then within five, six months, there will be good enough data to understand yes. what is working, what is not working. Absolutely. I mean, that's the bare minimum. Uh, I, I know restaurants who process even 200, 300 daily orders through one branch, oh. but 10 orders per day, that's that's a bare minimum for you to be able to learn what exactly needs to be fixed in your supply chain or in your entire value chain. So that is a bare minimum. So minimum 10, month, 10 orders per day and minimum three months you need to be able to fix all the problems which might be there in your value chain. Mm. Okay okay nice so i have covered all the points for today uh it's actually uh whenever i talk to you you actually provide such a good framework for me some of the questions you automatically delete from my mind you will clarify <laughs> yourself in the answer that i have 10 questions so five will get clarified in the answer and then i just have to focus on five so which is a very good thing so amazing man is valuable and time is money if i'm able to save time for myself and for you so yes. kudos to me both <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 yes 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 so uh, thanks a lot for that and i think we have covered the most critical ones like what you said like there are so many metrics but i think most critical ones are which we need to understand for anyone who wants to learn more about the space so from that angle i think the five which you have explained today uh, are like good enough to start with